All right, FAQ number 27. What about foreign language translations? Okay, another attack that will come on you if you're a King James Bible believer. They'll say, so you believe the only Bible is, you know, that's perfect is the English King James Bible. Does that mean that foreign people have to learn English to have the Bible in their language? No. <laughs> okay, that's another one of these little slanderous attacks that these little uh, satanic imps have come out with to attack people that hold to a Bible that is a standard there in the English-speaking world. Um, no, you can actually translate the Bible into any language out there. I believe that. And I believe that it can be just as, as uh, preserved, perfect, inspired, inerrant, whatever you want to say, if it's translated faithfully, translated accurately. And you say, well, well, what about uh, different ways of, you know, I mean, because, you, you know, study different languages, you'll see that it's, there's no such thing as, as going from this language directly into that language. The word order is oftentimes changed around and things are different. Um, so you say, well, then how could it be perfect? Well, by simply translating things faithfully. If your language says it slightly differently, okay, fine. But don't change it. All right? I'm going to show you an example of that here in just a minute or two. But just to illustrate my point here, translation would be like me saying to somebody, if somebody was here visiting, and I'd say, hey, my wife needs some money out of this wallet here. I want you to take this wallet out and give it to her. Okay? Translate it from this room to the room where she's at. See? And now when that wallet gets there, if I have $40 in cash in here, then it needs to have $40 in cash out there. Okay? That's faithful translation. Not $39.95 when it gets out there. No, $40. Okay? And if you go from one language to another, it'd be like taking my wallet and saying, okay, I'm going to exchange the currency for the currency of this country, and it's going to be worth $40 in whatever that currency is. Okay, if you are translating a Bible and you come to Acts chapter 8, verse 37, put Acts 8, 37 into whatever language you're translating into. I mean, it really isn't that hard to figure out. But let me show you an example of bad translation, a very corrupt satanic translation. Here we have this book, God's City in the Jungle. This is about Wycliffe Bible translators. They're one of the worst out there. They use the corrupted Alexandrian text. And um, page 131, Doris had a significant part in the translation push. She typed up and checked the books being completed and gave other aid as she could. Doris Lambert called one day. We're really at a loss for this phrase. Their senseless minds were darkened. That's not even King James there, but she says, after a pause, Doris thought of a possibility. How about their minds became bad and they thought even more evil? Okay, the Bible says about, the, you know, actually that verse, I think there would be their foolish heart was darkened. So their senseless minds were darkened. But their minds became bad and they thought even more evil. Leonardo chimed in. Um, That's just the thought that came to me. Well, isn't, what, isn't that a nice coincidence there? This is about their, their down translating the Bible for these people in South America is what this thing's about. And they're saying these poor primitive jungle people, they're too dumb to understand certain words in our English language. And you're going to see how bad it gets. So we're going to have to just change the Bible so that they can understand it in some way. Let's continue. Unity, unity of thought was repeatedly sensed. Regarding fishers of men, Leonardo observed, you don't fish men. But you see, look at the, look at the important tie-in here. The Bible, that's what Jesus said. He said, fishers of men. But he says, you don't fish men. And if you say catchers of men, you, you may mean policemen. The words we finally were finally defined by saying, before you worked at netting fish, but now you're going to work at my work and tell people my word. Matthew 4.19. That's not what the text says. You say, well, they don't understand fishers of men. Do you think anybody in any culture understands that? Jesus is making a particular reference to things there. Comparing lost people to like fish. And they're the, you totally lose all the analogies when you do that. It's just insane. Down here it says, Mysteries of the kingdom of God was another thought-provoking phrase. Its simple equivalent became that word which at first only God knew. So it, it, you eliminate all the other mysteries. 
There's seven of them in the King James Bible. You just eliminate them. You say, oh, they don't understand. These poor primitive people wouldn't understand mysteries. Absolutely disgusting. Look over here at this next page, page 133. The last book, Revelation, had several problems they hadn't encountered elsewhere, but the primary need was to accurately paraphrase meanings as they had been doing. I am the Alpha and Omega, a, one of the titles of, of the Lord, became everything began with me and nothing lasts longer than I. Um, you're changing a title of God Almighty. That's very serious. It's extremely serious. I believe these people are in hell okay, for doing this. This is insane. How about this one? You are lukewarm was rendered. You only believe a little bit and only a little bit live for me. The metaphorical judgment depicted by his will, he will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God was streamlined. Ooh, there you go. Into he will greatly punish those people with that punishment which God in his anger has prepared. You see, this is satanic blasphemy right here. Satanism coming in and saying the people, these people in the jungle don't understand what lukewarm means. You know, hey, you're boiling water there. You know, before it gets to that really hot stage, it's not hot, it's not hot, it's not cold. Just like it says right there in the text. You know, Revelation chapter 3, it's lukewarm. You say, what if they don't have a word lukewarm in their language? Then you just take that word, that English word, and put it into their language, teach them how to say it. It means lukewarm. You know, there's a lot of languages that don't have some modern uh, American type words like ice cream. So you can go and you can see some certain dialects around the world. They get a bowl of ice cream. They go, what do we call this? Well, what's the American name? Ice cream. I mean, you know, the King James translators, according to that philosophy, the King James translators should have come to Hebrew words in the Old Testament, Hebrew proper names, and said, we don't have an equivalent in English, so we'll just say, you know, instead of... Abraham will call him John or Phil or something like this. See, this is not good translation right here. This Wycliffe Bible translator is nonsense. That's not good translation. But taking a King James Bible and using it to translate and, and, and using this one and other language, and language translations and things to, to make a translation into some other language and getting it as close to word for word as you can, that's good translation, and I'm all for that. You say, well, what about the King James Bible? Did they use any kind of other language translations? Actually, yes, they did. Here in the translators to the reader, it says, neither did we think much to consult the translators or comment commentators, Chaldee, uh, Hebrew, Syrian, Greek, or Latin, no, nor the Spanish, French, Italian, or Dutch, Neither did we, did we disdain to revise that which we had done, and to bring back to the anvil that which we had hammered, but having and using as great helps as were needful, and fearing no reproach for slowness, nor coveting praise for expedition, we have at the length, through the good hand of the Lord upon us, brought the work to that pass that you see. Okay, they spoke a lot more intelligently than we did, or they, than we do, excuse me. But you see, they used other language translations that actually predated the King James Bible. Not only did they use the Greek and the Hebrew, but they also used other language translations to refine this. And they said, well, you know, and they, and they go over it and they, they put it through all these different tests. Test after test after test after test before it was finally accepted. It took them seven years to translate this King James Bible. It's incredible. So do you have to learn English in order to... Uh, you know, understand the, the Holy Word of God? No, you don't. But look for a translation that matches up with this. Okay, matches up with this King James Bible type of readings. Okay, um, obviously if you go and you see um, 1 Timothy 3, 16, you know, God was manifest in the flesh. Look at your foreign language translation. Does it say God was manifest in the flesh? If it says he who appeared in a body or that which was manifested in the flesh or some other satanic Alexandrian reading, you reject it. You say, no, that's no good. Look for a, a translation that matches the King James Bible or other language equivalents like that. Okay? So we will see you in the next FAQ video.